It's July 17th here in Seoul, and I'm Kim Dami. We begin with these stories making the headlines at this hour, starting with a new record high for U.S. gold. The U.S. gold price reached a fresh new record high on Tuesday, driven by hopes of Federal Reserve rate cuts this year and a second Trump victory in the U.S. presidential election. The International Monetary Fund revised up South Korea's 2024 growth outlook to 2.5 percent, supported by stable global economic expansion. The global agency kept the global economy's growth forecast at 3.2 percent. Heavy downpours are pounding South Korea's Gyeonggi-do province, and a heavy rain warning has been issued for the cities of Paju and Pochan. Seoul City is forecast to see up to 120 millimeters of rain until Thursday. U.S. gold price soared on Tuesday to reach a new all-time high amid prospects of a September rate cuts and former U.S. President Donald Trump's re-election in November. Despite signs of a U.S. Fed cutting rates soon, Trump says the central bank shouldn't make such a decision before the presidential election. Lee seung has more. The U.S. gold price rose to an all-time high on Tuesday amid rate cut expectations and the prospect of a White House return for former U.S. President Donald Trump. On Wall Street, gold futures closed at $2,467.80 per ounce, up 1.6 percent from the previous trading session to set a fresh all-time high. Soaring gold prices come amid market expectation that the U.S. Federal Reserve will almost certainly cut the benchmark interest rate by September. Gold prices tend to rise when inflation expectations rise or interest rates fall. Analysts also say growing speculation that Donald Trump, who survived an assassination attempt last weekend, would be re-elected is driving up the gold price. The Financial Times pointed out that Trump's tariff and tax cut policies could increase U.S. fiscal deficit and geopolitical tensions, which would boost inflationary pressure and lure investors to safer assets like gold. The Dow Jones also surged during Tuesday's trading session, up 742.76 points, or 1.85 percent from the previous session, to close at 40,954.48. The index of 30 prominent companies listed on these stock exchanges reached back-to-back -back days of fresh all-time highs as it marked the largest single-day increase in 13 months. The S&P 500 also jumped at 35.98 points, or 0.64 percent from the previous trading session, closing at another all-time high of 5,667.20. While the positive momentum on Wall Street is mainly centered on rate cut expectations, Trump says rates should not be cut before November's presidential election. During an exclusive interview with Bloomberg released Tuesday, the former president warned the U.S. Fed should abstain from cutting rates and giving the economy and his rival, Joe Biden, an election boost. According to Bloomberg, Wall Street expects two interest rate cuts before the end of the year, including one before the November election. Trump says it's something the U.S. Fed knows they shouldn't be doing. Lee seung Arirang News. South Korea's economic growth outlook for this year has been raised by the IMF, along with a moderate downgrade for the U.S. and Japan. Our Lee Su jin has more. The International Monetary Fund has upgraded its growth forecast for South Korea's economy this year to 2.5%. The IMF, which publishes its World Economic Outlook in January, April, July and October each year, on Tuesday raises growth outlook 0.2 percentage points from the 2.3 percent forecast made in April. The projection aligns with the Bank of Korea's forecast and is slightly lower than the anticipated growth set by the OECD, the South Korean government and the Korea Development Bank of 2.6 percent. The boost in South Korea's growth forecast was mostly due to its faster-than-expected growth in the first quarter of 1.3 percent on the back of robust exports. Exports in June saw on-year growth for the ninth straight month, with shipments of chips, the nation's largest export item, surging more than 50 percent compared to the previous year. As for other nations, the IMF lowered its growth forecast for the United States by 0.1 percent to 2.6 percent this year as the labor market shows increasing signs of cooling. 
Japan's growth was also moderately downgraded to 0.7 percent from April's projection of 0.9 percent. But the growth outlook for China was hiked to 5 percent from 4.6 percent due to a rise in China's exports and a recovery in private consumption in the first quarter. And the eurozone's growth forecast was raised 0.1 percent to 0.9 percent thanks to the strong performance of its services industry. Regarding the global outlook for this year, the IMF kept a steady at 3.2 percent with a slightly stronger growth of 3.3 percent for 2025. While this year's projection was kept steady, it remains tepid considering how the global economy expanded 3.8 percent on average before the pandemic. Near-term risks have become more prominent. This risk may result in higher for even longer interest rates, which in turn increases external, fiscal and financial risks. Additionally, significant swings in economic policy around the election could lead to fiscal slippages and heighten protectionism. And near-term risks aside, the IMF said that policymakers need to make it their priority to restore price stability and that strengthening multilateral cooperation is essential to addressing global challenges. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. A high-ranking North Korean diplomat based in Cuba is confirmed to have defected to South Korea last year. Now, the news comes as the latest uh, in a series of defections by members of the North Korean elite in recent years. Our Kim jong sil has the details. A senior North Korean diplomat based in Cuba defected to the South last November. On Tuesday, the National Intelligence Service said that media reports on the defection of a North Korean counselor of political affairs in Cuba were factual. The NIS gave no further details. A South Korean newspaper, the Joseon Ilbo, reported early Tuesday that 52-year-old Lee Il-gyu fled to the south with his wife and children. Lee, a leading expert on relations with Cuba, reportedly left around the time South Korea was actively communicating with Cuba ahead of establishing diplomatic ties in February. He told the paper any North Korean resident would think of wanting to live in South Korea at least once, adding that he felt irritation with the North Korean regime, pessimism about the future, and desire to escape these as his motivation for fleeing. Lee's defection made headlines as he is one of the highest-ranking North Korean diplomats made public to have defected in recent years. The acting ambassadors to Italy and Kuwait defected in 2019, while the defection by Taeyong-ho, the former deputy ambassador to the UK in 2016, remains that of the highest-ranked diplomat to come to the South. Pundits say the continued defections of senior North Korean diplomats indicate that members of the elite in the North are becoming increasingly disillusioned with the Kim Jong-un regime. Their situation of being stationed abroad could also make it easier for them to defect. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. U.S. authorities have apparently increased security for Donald Trump after receiving intelligence that Iran may attempt to assassinate the former U.S. president, who was shot during a campaign rally last Saturday. According to CNN on Tuesday, citing multiple officials, security was raised after U.S. authorities received the intel in recent weeks. However, the report added there is still no indication that the recent shooting by 20-year-old Matthew Crooks at a rally in Pennsylvania was connected to the intel. CNN questioned the security lapses by the Secret Service despite receiving the intelligence weeks prior. Trump's camp did not comment on the security issue, adding all questions should be directed to the Secret Service. Now, the Secret Service said it had recently increased the number of security personnel and resources following Saturday's assassination attempt. Heavy downpours in a considerable amount of time from late June to July is the monsoon season that many of us here in South Korea are familiar with. But that doesn't seem like the case in the past few years. What's changing and shaping the monsoon landscape? We're joined by Professor Yoon Jin-ho this morning. Welcome back. 
Thank you very much. So, like I said, it feels like it's become a lot more difficult to predict, you know, the precipitation and where the rain will fall and until when. Instead, we're seeing more abrupt and extremely heavy downpours in specific areas. Why is that? So, rain rate per hour at some places in South Korea exceeded 100 millimeter per hour, which is simply just unrealistic. Mm. It is like you are taking a shower when you have those rain. It is very difficult to tell why at this moment that we are having such heavy rains. Uh, we need some more thorough analysis. But I can tell increasing humidity in the atmosphere could provide some very important background, meaning that in early days, we are having rain maybe like a 50 or maybe maximum 60s. Mm -hmm. But because of so much humidity due to the global warming, that could, you know, drive this uh, very, very heavy downpours. So it is, it is not surprising to see like a rain rate can go to 100 or even more. So just, just pre prepare those things uh, in case you need to be outside. Definitely. Then is this something we should expect to see again throughout this entire summer? I mean, does this mean the monsoon season here in South Korea is no longer the monsoon season we are familiar with? Well, unfortunately, yes, it is. So the rainy period, the, the Changma season is not complete yet. So usually it uh, lasts until like the end of the July. So meaning that until that time, we are going to see some rains. But if it's not rain, it's going to be very hot and humid. But when it's rain, it's going to be very hard. So heavy downpour is expected. So it will be dramatic as it has been in the past few years. Now, is that also why heavy downpours have been concentrated in the southern and central parts of the country? Whereas, you know, here in South Korea, uh, here in Seoul, it's been relatively dry up until today. You know, why such dramatic precipitation in different regions? So the Changma frontal system is, uh, is right now is, is moving, it will start to move northward, mm -hmm. meaning that like last week we had a lot of rain in the southern provinces. But like starting from today, there are some forecasts that the heavy downpour could happen around the Seoul and Gyeonggi area. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a you know, it might hitting the population center. So just get ready for those events. It, it will move up and down. So don't be surprised that the, you are going to have rain tomorrow or even the day after tomorrow and so on like that. Right, because it's so unpredictable. And so much rain, yet we haven't had had to deal with an unusual, you know, usual summer guest, a typhoon. Uh, why no typhoon yet? So typhoon season is usually starting from like August. So there are maybe one or two in July, but uh, the main season is August and September. So we are, you know, it's, uh, we, we need to wait for those time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so as we get to the August or September, we may see some of those uh, typhoons. And then, I, you know, like uh, the, the hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean becomes very strong ones earlier days. So... If it is developed, there is a high chance it can be a very strong one too. So typhoon may be on the way, but just not yet because they usually come around, you know, August, which will be next month. Uh, Professor Yoon, prevention is key, like you said, when it comes to facing these, you know, unpredictabilities of nature. But there are also times we find ourselves in trouble at times. Uh, please do walk us through safety measures against sudden heavy downpours. So I mentioned to you that the, when the rain is be, you know, above 100, or 100 millimeter per hour, meaning just like you are in the shower booth. Mm. So the, the amount of the water that comes down within very short time is very much. So that means it can lead to flash flood. So especially at night time when, you know, you usually go on the pass or you just walk the, the walk, you know, bypass along the levers, but, you know, when it's rain, you know, even it's not hard this time when, when you try to go out, 
you shouldn't go, you, you shouldn't take those things at, you know, in, in particularly in these seasons, because when the rain comes within 30 minutes, it's going to be a lot of rain. Also, when you drive, when your tire is, uh, you know, about one third or beyond, then you lose the control of your car. So that's very dangerous thing. So, um, you know, don't assume anything. Just to take the precaution as much as possible. And that's, uh, you know, that's the, the best safety measures. Professor Yuan, before I let you go, if some experts are saying that La Nina is a developing, not El Nino. Is that the phenomenon that we're <clears throat> experiencing at the moment? So El Nino is a, is a demising and then the La Nina is a start to develop. Um, but the, the peak season of those El Nino, La Nina is in the winter time. Ah. Uh, summer season is usually, you know, there are many factors. Uh, one of that we are looking at is that the, the ocean temperatures around surrounding Koreas, which is very, very high this time. So like a typhoon is, you know, is, is a matter of, you know, chances. Mm. When it develops, it can be develop very big because if so much heat is uh, in, at, at the ocean side. Right, so much heat and also humidity, like you mentioned. All right, Professor Yoon, thank you so much for your time and insight. As always, you have a wonderful day and stay safe. Thank you very much. A legendary b-boy will depart for Paris as the first Korean break, uh, dance-breaking competitor. At almost 40 years old, the breakdancer is determined to put on a spectacular finale in Paris, which might be his last stage as a national representative. Choi Soo-hyung has his story. Kim Hong-yeol, as known as Hong Tan, is a 39-year-old South Korean breakdancer. He will compete in breaking, which became an official sport for the first time at this year's Paris Olympics. He has won the Red Bull BC1 World Final, regarded as a world championship level competition, three times. Last year, at the Asian Games in Hangzhou, he won Korea's first ever silver medal as a world class b-boy. This year, he made history here by being the only Korean athlete in breaking to qualify for the Paris Olympics. I want to show the world what the breaking is, especially to those who might not be familiar with this dance, and I hope many people will enjoy it and even try it out themselves. I plan to work hard with that goal in mind. Personally, I feel great about achieving my goal and making it this far. His signature move is the freeze, a position held without movement for almost 10 seconds. He is also known for his power moves, connecting high-difficulty movements continuously. At this Olympics, he said his strongest competitors were Phil Kim, known as Phil Wizard from Canada, Shigeyuki Nakarai, known as Shiga Kicks from Japan, and Victor Montalvo, known as Victor from the U.S. Despite his countless breaking battle experiences, Hong Tan said he feels both excited and nervous about competing on the Olympic stage. This is Hong Tan, representing Korea in the Paris Olympics. I ask for your support and I'll do my best to achieve great results that meet your expectations. Thank you so much. Wearing the team uniform adorned with the Korean national flag, the Taeguki, Hong Tan already feels a sense of pride and determination as a national representative. His journey to make history is about to begin. Choi Soo Hyung, Arirang News. Good morning, I'm Kim si and this is The World Now. We begin today in Thailand, where local police are investigating the deaths of six people whose bodies were found on Tuesday in a luxury hotel suite in the country's capital, Bangkok. Police officers at the scene found the bodies of three men and three women at the Grand Hyatt Erawan Hotel after a call from the staff at around 5.30 p.m. local time. All of the deceased were Vietnamese nationals, although two held dual U.S.-Vietnam citizenship. According to Thailand's Metropolitan Police Chief, seven people were booked to stay at the hotel, but only five checked in. One person remains unaccounted for, while one of the dead did not match hotel records. 
Authorities are investigating whether the cause of death was poisoning, as suspicious substances were detected in the drinks. Thailand's Prime Minister, Sretha Tavisin, who visited the scene, said the victims had been dead for 24 hours before being found, adding that the deaths were from a killing and that a motive needed to be found. Investigators say there was no evidence of a robbery or a fight. U.S. Senator for New Jersey Bob Menendez has been found guilty of 16 counts related to accepting bribes in exchange for helping foreign governments. A jury on Tuesday convicted the 70-year-old Democratic senator of all 16 criminal charges, including bribery, obstructing justice and acting as a foreign agent. The former head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee was found to have received gifts, including gold bars worth over 100,000 U.S. dollars, and FBI agents found some $500,000 of cash in Menendez's home. Prosecutors said that Menendez helped the Egyptian government secure millions of dollars in U.S. aid after receiving the bribes from his business associates. Menendez faces possibly decades in prison. His lawyer has vowed to appeal. Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said in a statement following the verdict that Senator Menendez must now do what is right for his constituents, the Senate and our country, and resign. A bus crash in Peru's Andes Mountains on Tuesday killed at least 23 people and left 13 injured. According to Peru's Highway Protection Division, the bus carrying more than 40 people was traveling from the capital Lima to Ayacucho at dusk before it skidded off a highway in the Andean Ayacucho region and overturned and plummeted down a 200-meter long slope. A senior official said the excellent accident took place on the Los Libertadores Highway in the South Central Andes and that rescue efforts are continuing. Peru's ground transportation superintendent said an investigation into local bus company Turismo Molina Union SAC has begun. Ahead of Paris 2024, the organizing committee of this year's Olympics have revealed the cardboard beds that will be used by athletes during the summer games. The recyclable cardboard beds were presented in Paris on Thursday. They were initially created in 2021 for the Tokyo Olympic Games and have three separate blocks, allowing athletes to customize their mattresses to suit their bodies. According to Paris 2024, 16,000 cardboard beds have been ordered for the Summer Olympics, which will also be used during the Paralympic Games before being donated to charities. Good morning. It was a chaotic night with downpours for Gyeonggi-do and parts of Chungcheong-do province. And especially those in Paju, Yeoncheon and Pocheon saw buckets of rain with more than 200 millimeters of showers in Paju area. Concern is on the rise as heavy rain is forecast to lash down on those regions with more than 200 millimeters in the forecast through tomorrow. The rest of the central regions could see 120 millimeters of downpours lashing down. A heavy rain warning is in place for northern parts of Gyeonggi-do and an advisory is in place for Cheon and Hwacheon in Gangwon-do province this morning. Meanwhile, landslide crisis alerts are at a serious level, the third highest on the four-tier scale, so please stay safe. Temperature-wise, the central regions will have highs that are a couple of degrees lower today, topping out at 28 degrees Celsius here in the capital. But southern provinces will notice a hotter afternoon, topping out at 32 degrees in Daegu. With that in mind, let's take a look at the international weather conditions.
We thank you for watching New Day at Arirang. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, 9 a.m. Korea time. Thank <music> you.